Hello there, a very warm welcome indeed to Authors Live. Thank you so much for joining us. Really delighted that you can be here with us. It's always fun in Authors Live and it means so much to us to know that you're watching in schools and other places right around the country. I'm Janice Forsyth, absolutely thrilled as ever because we've got a really, really brilliant guest. We've always got great authors, but a particularly wonderful one today. Uh, not only an author, an illustrator, and she is the current Children's Laureate. She's awfully busy. She's Lauren Child, the woman responsible for creating, I'm sure, some of your favourite characters including Charlie and Lola, and you'll have seen them in the telly too in the CBB's animated series. Clara Spean, and uh, we're going to find out today about how she creates those characters. So some secrets for you if you're interested in writing. Uh, and also we're going to get an insight into the fabulous child genius, Hubert Horatio. Lauren Child, welcome to Authors Live. Thank you very much. It's lovely to have you here. Love your dungarees, incidentally. Oh, thank you. Absolutely yeah. fab. <laughs> um, yeah, tell me about, I mean, we know you're busy anyway because you write so many books, but as children's law, it. Are you just sort of non-stop travelling the country, meeting children? I am, but I, I think more than because I meet children anyway yeah. in my in my usual work, um, talking about my books. But I think the job of the children's laureate is perhaps to pick up on other ways we can think about creativity and the other conversations that we can have around it to try and make perhaps um, life a bit more fun yeah. and and also to 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 sort of seriously think about how we can actually all take part and be creative yes. beings. Yeah, so something there for children and for grown-ups, actually. And for grown-ups, too, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, brilliant. We're going to chat much more about what you do and find out how you create those, those characters. And, of course, we want to hear from you. Please, please get in touch. You can use the hashtag BBC Authors Live. Please get in touch. We love to hear from you. BBC Authors Live. And you can ask Lauren anything, really. You're up yeah. for any kind of oh, questions yeah, you can. Yep. about being an illustrator, about being an author, about what's involved in being children's laureate, how you go about writing a story. Please get them in. Uh, BBC Authors Live is the hashtag. Um, so before before we chat further with Lauren, we are in for a treat. Lauren was just saying we should have more fun. Uh, so we're in for a, a treat now with a, a reading by a brilliant Scottish actress, Sarah McCarty. And this is from the Charlie and Lola story, A Dog With Nice Ears. I have this little sister, Lola. She is small and very funny. At the moment, all Lola can talk about is dogs. She says she would like one more than anything you could ever think of. More than a squirrel or an actual fox, she says. Sometimes my sister pretends to be a dog. Sometimes she pretends that I am a dog. And sometimes she pretends we have a dog. Mostly, we both talk about what sort of dog she would choose if mum and dad didn't always say Absolutely no dogs. Lola says, it's not fair. Charlie's friend Marv has a dog. Dad says, hmm, lucky Marv. Mum says, how about a rabbit, Lola? I say, a rabbit is not the same as a dog. Lola says, it's not even the same as a squirrel. Dad says he can take Lola to the pet shop one Saturday and she can choose whichever rabbit she wants. Lola says, OK. I say, but Lola, you do not want a rabbit. And Lola says, don't worry, I will choose a dog. I would get a brown dog, because my friend Marv has a brown dog and they're the best kind of dog. Lola thinks so too. She wants to call it Snowpuff. But I say, that is not a good name for a brown dog. Lola says, but snow is nice. And I like the word puff. This is not a good reason to call a brown dog snow puff. Lola says, it must have nice ears because ears are important. You hold your glasses on with your ears. I say, but Lola, your dog won't need glasses. How do you know? She says. I say, have you ever seen a dog wearing glasses? She says, no, but they probably only wear them for reading. What about its tail? I say. Tails are important for dogs. They use their tails to tell you how they're feeling. Lola says, if I had a tail, 
I would have a bushiest tail like a fox. But my friend Lotta would most probably have a featherish tail like a bird. I say, Lola, we are talking about a tail for a dog. Lola says, well then, a waggy one of course. I say, this is the only sensible thing you've said so far. Lola says, yes. It must be very waggy and five rulers long. I say, no dog has a tail as long as five rulers. Lola says, then how about a puffy tail? I say, what dog has a tail like that? Lotta says, an extremely furish dog has a puffy tail. Lola says, oh yes, it must have extremely furry fur. More furrier than a poodle, says Lotta. Yes, not like a poodle, says Lola. More like a Pekingese, I say. Exactly, says Lola. A bit like a cat. I say, I hope you don't want a dog that meows. Lola says, but of course our dog must not be a meower. It must absolutely do barking. Good, I say. Barking is best for a dog. Yes, says Lola, and it must be very, very quiet barking so it doesn't wake us up. But barking is meant to wake us up, I say. Lola says, our dog can wake us up with sniffing. Marv says, dogs do like to sniff. So it should have a wiggly nose, says Lola. I say, do dogs have wiggly noses? Only if they've got an itch, says Marv. Oh, I don't want an itchy dog, I say. Marv says, they only itch if they catch fleas. My dog must not catch fleas, says Lola. He must catch sticks. Marv says, it can be any colour you want and have any ears you like. But whatever dog you get, it must be a dog with short legs. Dogs with short legs do less walking. Lola says, why don't we get a dog with three legs, like Mrs Hansen's one? He only hops. It might be tricky to find a dog with less than four legs, I say. But a hopping dog would be nice, says Lola. You are going to have the weirdest dog, says Marv. One Saturday, Lola gets up early. Where are you going, I say. I am going to the pet shop, she says. To get a rabbit, I ask. No, she says. I told you, I am going to fetch my dog. When Lola comes home, she's carrying a big box. I can't hear any barking, I say. No, this dog is more of a sniffer, says Lola. It sounds like it's hopping, I say. Exactly, says Lola. I won't even have to train him. I peek inside. That's not a brown dog, I say. No, it's slightly more grey, says Lola. They did not have any brown ones with nice ears. I say, Lola, this dog looks a bit like a rabbit. I know, says Lola. It's because of the wiggly nose. And maybe the puffy tail, I say. What shall we call him? She says, I say, how about Snow Puff? Yes, Snow Puff is a good name for a dog with nice ears.
Wasn't that brilliant? Absolutely great. Uh, Lauren, it must be lovely actually to hear one of your stories read out, especially so beautifully. Yes, I really enjoy it. Yes, ex exactly. It's by a professional. <laughs> but I, I enjoy it a lot more than reading them myself. It's yes, really nice. Yes. To oh, that's so, great. Yeah. And the whole idea of reading together is so important. Oh, yeah. I'm sure yeah. You'll, be, you'll be talking about that too. So, the great news is, let's meet our audience. We are so pleased from one of my favourite cities in Scotland, in the UK, in the world, Bonnie Dundee, City of Discovery. We've got terrific pupils from a great school, St Mary's Primary School, and let us wave then. So wherever you are across the country, you can wave. There they are, wave. Yes, hello. Lots of new <laughs> friends being made across the country. Fantastic. So, are you all set for Brilliant Authors Live? Yeah. Are you all set as well? Let us give a huge round of applause to our fabulous children's laureate, Lauren Child. Thank you. So I thought I would just talk about um, my first thought when I was asked to be children's laureate. Um, and I was thinking about the question I get asked more than any other, which is where do you get your ideas from? And the thing about ideas is that everywhere, there's an infinity of ideas, as I'm sure you know. Every day we see things um, that trigger a little thought for us, and that's an idea. And it's not the ideas that are difficult to have, it's actually finding an I an another idea that will connect to that little idea and collide with it and make it into something else. Because you need more than one idea to make a story or a picture or a piece of music or an invention um, or problem solve. You need more than that. And funnily enough, it's, it's finding the time to put all those little ideas together and, and sort of weave them into one thing, that that's the bit that takes the time. So if you came into my studio, you'd be surprised to see me often just sitting there staring into space and you think, you, that woman is doing absolutely nothing. And sometimes I'm staring out of the window. But sometimes that is the most productive time of all when I'm not doing something because writing a book is not like doing the exam. You don't sit there and have an hour and a half to sort of tell your story. In fact, it's done over days and days and weeks and weeks. And finally, I find that little piece that makes sense with this little piece and that little piece. And it might be that there's something I've heard on the radio or something I remember about my childhood or something that I see when I'm staring out of the window. And when I was um, trying to write Clarice Bean, which is this book, um, just such a thing happened. I was getting distracted and I, I was looking out of the window because I heard this voice, this boy calling another person's name and he was calling out to her. And I looked out of the window and my room was really high up. So I was looking down on, you know, you get this patchwork of gardens at the back of buildings, don't you? And you can see from one garden into the next. And I could see this little boy and he was trying to look over the wall because he was trying to see if this girl was there, his neighbour. And he couldn't see her, but I could see her. And she was hiding behind a tree, trying to avoid him. And that told me a lot about this girl because it made me think, oh, she's not the kind of person who's just going to do what someone else wants her to do. She's, she's going to do what she wants to do. So if she finds this boy annoying, then she's going to hide from him. And so that became the beginning of this char char character, Clarice Bean, because it told me everything I needed to know about her is that she's not the kind of girl that gets, gets bossed around too easily and she will do something like hide behind a tree. And you'll also see in that picture that the words are coming over the wall. Can you see they're, they're written quite big and bold? And that's because this boy had a really, really loud voice and I want to show you that in the picture. So that was an idea that came to me just from sort of slightly daydreaming and looking out of my window. Other things happen. Um, because of things that I don't want to do. So there, there are things that I remember being made to do when I was a child that I really didn't want to do. And at the time, you, you're a bit resistant and grumbly about it. Um, but actually, because you're being asked to do something that you wouldn't normally do, you have to sort of 
find a way of enjoying it. I don't know if you've ever had that, you, you feel a bit bored, but your mind just starts worrying because it's desperate not to be bored anymore. And then it starts thinking of, of ideas and possibly even games or stories or, th or interesting thoughts. And my parents really liked going round gardens. So in the holidays, we always stayed in Britain and we had to go around those gardens that are open to the public. And the thing about those, those big gardens, they're often attached to very big houses, really grand houses. I don't know if you've ever been to a stately home, if you've been to a home that used to belong to someone very, very wealthy and perhaps famous or perhaps royal and you walk around their houses and they're huge and you go into rooms that you can't believe the size of them and the size of the dining table um, and you can't believe that they have a room especially for all the saucepans so it's not the kitchen it's just a room to store all the saucepans in or a room to do flower arranging in nobody has that nowadays I don't think and and I'd look at all these rooms and I think about the history of the house and, and who who used to live there and what they used to do and then I'd look at all the people people like me walking through these rooms how tiny we all look in comparison to the doors and the tables and I started to think how this could be a story about a child maybe a child like you who, has, who lives in this house and how little he looks can you see how small he looks at that table and you might be able to just make out he's using a pair of binoculars to see if his parents have got the salt and pepper at the end of the table because the table is so long and then look how he looks in bed he looks tiny looks absolutely tiny in bed and he has these parents can you see this this is his mum and dad and they're playing twister which is not a game that adults normally play but Hubert Horatio's parents are quite eccentric and they love playing games. And so Hugh has to be the rather grown up one in the family who has to sort of take care of them because Hubert's parents just love meeting people, having parties, doing things, and they'll talk to anyone. And you can see this person is dressed as a hot dog, but they just want to chat to anyone, however they're dressed. Um, but as a result, they're easily distracted. They're the kind of people that, because they're so busy being interested in things, they sometimes get things wrong, and they sometimes have mix-ups. And this next picture shows um, one of their mix-ups. They're meant to be taking their baby son, Hubert, to water play for beginners. So it's like a baby swimming class. And they accidentally take him to scuba diving for the very advanced. And he has to learn how to scuba dive very quickly. And he becomes this incredibly responsible child because he's got these very irresponsible parents. And that gives him real confidence because he's good at trying things. He's good at having a go. And one of the things I wanted to do as laureate was to talk about have a go at something, even if you think you're not going to be good at it. Because it's not the being good that's important, it's the having a go and enjoying yourself. And who knows, actually, it might be your thing. And my thing as a child was drawing. And I was very, very lucky because like Hubert, you can see him drawing here, um, I really liked to have a go at all kinds of different styles of drawing. And I think because I had a father who was an art teacher, he was very, very happy to show me all the different ways you can draw. And we'd go to art galleries and we'd see the really, really different ways. So you can see that there, Hubert is drawing in a very traditional old fashioned style, which is sort of called Renaissance drawing. But he also is happy to have a go at very, very modern abstract art. And I became interested in that too. And going, going and looking at old pictures, if you ever get the chance to go to an art gallery, and they're often free to go and look around, and it's really amazing all the different ways you see that you can draw. And the other thing I used to look at, apart from picture books, apart from illustrations, was comics. And I don't know if any of you are interested in comics or like looking at comic strips, but you can learn a lot from looking at those. And what I really, really particularly like was the Peanuts comic strips by an artist called Charles Schultz. And the Peanuts comic strips, as you probably know, are Snoopy and Charlie Brown and all those characters. And what I noticed about them is how simply they're drawn, but how expressive the faces are, 
how, how you can read the faces. So when Charlie Brown's eyebrows go down, we sort of know that he's feeling worried or anxious or sad. And when they tip up, you can see that he's feeling a bit angry. And we're very good at reading facial expressions. And, and it was something that was very helpful to me just to look at those and copy them and do them in my own way. And so can you see, this is Lola and here she is She's trying to negotiate with her mother because her mother says, you're allowed to go to the shops and you're allowed to choose one thing. And Lola thinks, well, I don't want one thing. I want three things. And so you can see her here with her hand on her hip. And she's looking quite bossy and quite sure of herself because she's decided she's going to have three things, not one thing. But when her mother pushes back and says, uh-uh, one thing, Lola's suddenly looking a little less sure of herself. And can you see the way she's crossed her legs? and she's now fidgeting with her hand and that shows us that she's not feeling quite as sure of herself as we thought she was. Um, the next picture is also influenced by looking at comics because if you notice in comics sometimes the words get really really big and that's telling you something a bit like a picture. That word no is so big that there's no room for a picture there but we really get the sense that Charlie and Lola's mum and dad are not going to let her have a dog. There is no way they're going to let her have a dog. And we can't ignore that, no. And nor can Lola. She's kind of backing off it. And so that's another way of sort of showing what's going on in the picture without showing the people. We can't see the mum and dad. And I do this as well, even in the chapter books. So in the Clarice Bean chapter books, you'll notice that the words are sometimes written a little bit like poetry. If you've ever looked at poetry, it's often written on quite short lines and they sort of break in different places. They don't just run all the way across the page. And that's to help you get the sense of the poem and the rhythm and so that you can read it in a different way. And I want you to read Clarice Bean in a different way. And so you can see that um, Clarice Bean's teacher, Mrs. Wilburton, is quite angry with Clarice because she's not paying attention. Clarice Bean is one of those people, she's often sort of daydreaming, drifting off. Um, and I want to show you what it looks like in Clarice Bean's head when she loses focus. So can you see, I've made all the words begin to float around. And as she's drifting off in her mind's eye, she's sort of thinking about other things and finding it hard to concentrate. And Mrs. Wilburton finds this very annoying. But actually, it's incredibly hard to concentrate for long periods of time. I find it, you find it, your teachers will find it, we all find it. There's only so long that we can really, really focus really hard for. Um, and I think we're slightly designed to do that because when a word catches your imagination, like I've just been talking about Lola and dogs, and perhaps that's making you think about a dog that you would quite like to own. Or perhaps you do own a dog and it's making you wonder, did I remember to feed my dog this morning? And, and so we all start thinking of other things. But that is the very beginning of creativity. So that's what happens when we're being creative. We have little thoughts here and there, and sometimes, if we're lucky, they collide and they make a much bigger thought and a whole idea. So there you are. Let's hear a big round of applause. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Well, it's really fascinating to hear you talk about that and that whole idea of how we can maybe think at times, oh, my mind's going off in lots of different directions, that's yes. not a good thing. But there you're saying, actually, that is absolutely vital in terms of imagination and coming it up is. with ideas. I think it is for inventions, for problem solving, for creating anything. And, and I think we have this sort of wrong idea that everything is about productivity. We're always meant to be doing something constantly. Yeah. But actually, if you don't have those empty spaces of time, there's no chance for you to get your thoughts into your own order. Yeah. And I guess it's also lovely. I'm sure you enjoy picture books as well as other books. But just to see there on the screen the combination of your illustrations with the print it's a, an, an interesting freedom to have. And I think books, you, you guys are lucky because I think more and more books these days, people like you have more freedom to do that and play around yes. with it. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think I'm very, very glad because um, more, more and more um, books for 
um, teenage readers and indeed adults have now got pictures and images in yeah. and I think that's a really lovely thing because I think we're all very visual yeah you know we're all good at reading pictures and it's so interesting actually just to have you because it's as if you know we like to have the author along sort of whispering in your ear and explaining things while you're reading the book at home but that is so lovely actually just to hear you talking about what you're doing with the the characters ideas and then mm. you can make them yeah. visually represent that with the, uh -huh. they're not going in a straight line and that's okay yes absolutely <laughs> brilliant <laughs> now we have our lovely pupils from st mary's primary school and three of them lauren are going to come up to ask a question so come, come on up and join us let's have a round of applause Oh, thank you very much for coming here. Um, and you can hold your microphone. And your name is? Alex. Alex. And you hold it there and we can hear your question for Lauren. How do you decide on the names of your characters? Oh, well, it's all different ways. So Charlie and Lola I came up with because they sounded quite musical together. Those two names, Charlie and Lola, they have a kind of sing-song sound and I wanted that. Um, Clarice Bean, I wanted a name that I didn't know anybody called Clarice Bean. Mm -hmm. Clarice is a very old-fashioned name and I wanted her to have a name that pretty much nobody else seems to have these days. A few people do, but not many. And then she has a brother called Minor Cricket, which is a very unusual name. And I actually named it after a village from where I come, come from in Wiltshire. There's a village called Minor. And my best friend used to live next door to the cricket pitch. And I thought Minor Cricket sounded like a boy's name. So that's where that came from. Great question. Thank you very much, Alex. And what's your name? Annabelle. Annabelle, what's your question for Lauren? Who is your favourite picture book illustrator? There are so many that people I admire. Um, one, of, one of them is Quentin Blake, who you've probably heard of, and he does a lot of the Roald Dahl illustrations. That's what he's best known for. But it, he's done so many beautiful, beautiful drawings. But there's also someone called John Burningham. And I don't know if you know his books, but they are really, really worth looking out for. Just brilliant things and he's done a book called would you rather which is all about what would you rather do would you rather jump in a cow pat or would you rather fall in stinging nettles and you play this sort of game together and it's beautifully illustrated and very very funny thank you very much another great question thank you and lauren you do mind handing oh, the that. microphone hi what's your question which of your characters would you most like to be friends with that is a hard question i think clarice bean would be a good friend but i think Possibly the, the most useful friend might be someone like Ruby Redford. So I've written this book about this, this secret agent girl and she's very, very clever and dangerous and daring and she would get you out of a lot of trouble. But I think I'd quite like to visit Hubert Horatio's house because I think, I think you'd have a really good time there. Great. Fantastic questions. Thank you very much indeed. Let's hear it for our questioners, Annabelle, Alex and Holly. You can go back to your seat. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, I guess even when you're not being laureate, as you said, you must meet lots of, of children. And do you enjoy that, hearing questions from children who might be asking questions that grown-ups wouldn't think of? Yes, I, and, and very often it's surprising how many times you hear you get a question from people like you that you've never, ever thought to answer before. Mm. And it's quite exciting when that happens. But always... you you can think of another way of answering a question because there's never just one answer to a question. Yeah. You've got the best job in the world, haven't you? It's a really, really <laughs> nice job because, as I say, there's a lot of thinking time in it yeah. and, ch and chance to explore your imagination, which is lovely. Yes, indeed. Uh, we have some questions that have mm -hmm. come in uh, from some children across the country. Thank you very much for, for watching, for, for getting involved and sending a question and using the hashtag BBC Authors Live. Uh, so this has come from Rebecca uh, in Primary 7 Nidians, who says, is Charlie and Lola based on your childhood or people you know? Well, again, this is, as I was saying, it's, it's probably three different things. It's me being a fussy eater when I was little, and my sister was a very responsible child, a bit like Hubert, and she would always, always help me out with this problem and sort of take my food away from the table when my parents weren't looking. Um, and it's also about listening a lot to children and the way that we talk when we're younger and the way that we can invent things that we just can't do in the same way when we're grown up. We don't get that travelling in our imagination in the same way. Yeah. And I wanted to talk about those things. 
it's so interesting seeing your, the drawing there of the, the wee girl hiding behind the tree mm -hmm. and the boy looking over the wall. And yeah. I'm just wondering, have you kept lots of sketchbooks over the years? And even as a child, did you keep a diary? And is that full of ideas that still inspire you? I I um, I used to I used to draw and write quite a lot when I was a child. And it's not that the actual writing is very interesting, but it, what it does tell me is what I was interested in. Yeah. And I've always been interested in the everyday and sort of family life and the way that we talk to each other and the funny things that happen all the time and that you notice. And I always make a note of funny things or sad things even that I've seen just on any given day. Yeah. No, it's really interesting actually, because I think often when you're you're younger, you might think, oh, I might grow up and change, but often you find the things that you're interested in at your age, mm. you're still interested in as a grown-up. I think that's right. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're, they're what make you you special. Um, this is another one, another question for you from Twitter. This is from Liam. Hi, Liam. Thanks for watching with your class at Tullock Primary School. Uh, how long, Lauren Child, did it take you to make the Charlie and Lola series? Oh, well, that was made over a number of years in fact so I remember they they first started talking about it way back in 2003 and I think it was finally made at the end of 2004 and then it went on for sort of um, oh I can't remember we did three series and that was several years then of making it yeah and it was about me going into the television studios and working with the animation team on it and drawing things for them so it felt like a long time oh, but that must be fun to see that to sit back at home and watch it on the telly yeah it was <laughs> it was really it was very satisfying i'm sure it yeah. was and um, this is from primary two at knightswood primary school my old primary school oh. hello knightswood primary <laughs> in glasgow how now this is interesting because we love the humor because lauren makes us laugh in her books doesn't she but how hard is it to make your stories funny oh do you know what i never think about never think about that yeah. because I think what you have to do is sort of please yourself in in that way so you mm -hmm. what I mean by that is if you have to trust that if you find it interesting and funny then, then there might be just somebody out there who would also find it interesting and funny and you can't please everybody so never try and please everybody first of all try and please yourself and then hope that your ideas or jokes might translate and communicate with somebody else like you and maybe great you'll advice. like them. Absolutely great, thank you. Let's squeeze in one last one uh, from St Peter's in Primary 3. Hello St Peter's Primary 3. Lauren Child, did you have an imaginary friend? Do you know what, I never thought to have an imaginary friend <laughs> and I, I think what was wrong with me that I didn't think about it but I never never thought to have one and I've since now grown up realized that quite a lot of people have imaginary friends and what a good idea it is to have imaginary friends yeah because then they're always with you <laughs> <laughs> although you've got imaginary friends all the time with your characters right. this is it and, mm -hmm. and we all have those friends too well look we've sadly believe it or not where's the time gone we've run out of time oh well done, children of St Mary's Primary School in Dundee. Um, thank you so much uh, for, for watching and joining us. And don't forget, um, you can watch this session, this Authors Live session with Laura and Child all over again by going to the website scottishbooktrust.com forward slash Authors Live. And indeed, you can catch up with uh, the many other Authors Live events we've had over the years. Have you enjoyed it, Lauren? I really have. Oh, it's, it's been, been great to have you. It's very nice to see Let's you. Let's have a huge round of applause for Lauren Child.